Welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, we will talk about Autodesk Character Generator as a character creation tool for Unity. Character Generator is a web-based application that you can find at charactergenerator.autodesk.com. On this website, you can either create a free Autodesk account or you can sign into your existing account. Once you're signed in, you can see all your characters that you already created on this My Characters page. These are called character designs. You can create new character designs by clicking on this new character button up here in the top left. Once a character has been created, you can see whether the character is a free or a paid character by looking at this icon up here. The icon will indicate that the character contains items that are paid content. In order to export a character, for example to Unity, you have to generate a character design into a final character. In order to do that, you need to click the button Generate Character. Generating a paid character requires you to have a currency called Cloud Credits. Unfortunately, Autodesk does a pretty poor job at explaining how the Cloud Credits actually work. You cannot buy Cloud Credits just on the web. Instead, you need to purchase a subscription to Autodesk Character Generator first. This is an annual subscription that right now costs $75 and includes 50 Cloud Credits. Each generated character costs 5 cloud credits, so this subscription includes 10 generated characters. You can then at any time purchase further cloud credits while your subscription is active. Whenever you make changes to a character design and you want to re-generate the character, you again have to pay 5 cloud credits to generate that character. So for example, this character here on the left has paid content. I can generate this character right now for 5 cloud credits, but if I later decide that I want to change the hair of the character, if I ever want to regenerate that character with the new hair, I would have to again pay 5 cloud credits. The character on the right has no such icon in the top right, so I can generate this character for free at any time and make changes to it, as long as I do not include any paid items. Let's get started on creating our own character. Let's click on New. When creating your own character, you first have to make a choice of an artistic style and a default character. The artistic style is either Standard, Bulk or Gorn, whereas Bulk and Gorn are paid offerings, as you can see by the small blue icon. Bulk and Gorn are also more fantasy type characters. If I click on Bulk, I get reminded that I can create a character with the style, but I can only export it later on if I pay for the character. You can see that this artistic style already influences all the default characters here. If I go back to standard, I have more human characters to choose from. And here on the left, we have female default characters, and on the right, we have male default characters. We can also switch between premium and standard characters, again, shown by the small icon here in the top right. Let's create a free version of a character. And let's click Customize to continue. This is the main interface that we will work with when creating our character. On the left here, you see the preview of your character. And you can move the preview around with those controls up here, or you can select which part of the character you want to preview. Over here on the right, we have a selection of different parts that we can customize. And the one selected right now shows all the options here on the right. So these are all the different faces that we can use to customize our character. Autodesk Character Generator works a little bit differently compared to other character creators because you can simply drag and drop two different designs into these slots up here and then you can blend between them. So for example, I could create a blend between Buck and this character Frankie here. Now we have the slider to control the blend between both characters. Right now we have the whole face selected, but we can also customize individual parts of the face. For example, we can click down here on eyes, and now this little checkbox is unchecked, which means we can now select different styles to customize the eyes. Now we can customize the eyes independently from the rest of the face. And you can do the same for the other parts of the face. Let's continue with the skin. 
Selecting a skin works a little bit differently because there's no blending. You simply select one skin type. Here you can see that there's a few skin types that are paid offerings. Again, you can see this by looking at the small icon. Next up is eye color, hairstyle. And here with hairstyles, you can see that there's different variations for most of the hairstyles. You can see this by the small numbers up here, one out of nine. When you hover over a hairstyle, you can then select show variations and you see all the different color variations that exist. For this character, we will simply use a gray version of this receding hairstyle. The body, again, is a blending operation, so you can select two different styles and then blend between the different body parts. So we can select a heavier character, drag it in here, and then blend between the two characters. Unfortunately, this does not affect the head, so when you have a, a bulkier body, you w might then have to go back and select the head that fits the sort of body style that you selected. Lastly, we can select the clothing. Here, again, you have a lot of different variations that you can choose from. So you can hover over a certain clothing style that you like, and then look at the variations that exist. You can also switch between male and female versions of clothing items. Let's select some pants. and some shoes. Okay, now that our character is finished, we can simply click down here and finish. We can name the character. And the character will appear in our character designs. As you can see, there's no icon here because we did not select any paid offerings. Next, we will generate our characters in order to export them to Unity. Even though I really like our zombie character, I will simply use those two on the right to export them to Unity, so that we have a better comparison to the other characters we created in prior tutorials. Let's start with the free character. We simply click on Generate Character, which brings up a dialog that lets us select different options for generating the character. Up here, we can select the character's height. This is simply an overall scaling of the character, so selecting a lower height simply means the character scaled down. This is not the same as creating a child character, and there is actually no option in Autodesk Character Generator to create children. Also, we see our small symbol here again that indicates that some of the options are actually paid content. So in order to export facial blend shapes or facial bone rig, we would need to use cloud credits. Same goes for medium and high resolutions. Also, you can actually select multiple resolutions at the same time. Let's get rid of any paid offerings so that we can keep this character for free. We can select different textures. So clothes is simply the albedo map, and then we have specular and normal that we can also use in Unity. Geometry doesn't really make a difference. You can probably just select triangles, but regardless, Unity will convert quads into triangles anyway. So you might as well just select triangles here. The file format down here should be Unity FBX. We simply deselect generic. Next, we click on generate. Once our character is generated, we get a message here and number one appears here for our generated characters. Before we look at the generated characters, we will have a look at our paid character and generate it. Here we make similar selections, but now we select high resolution. We export the facial blend shapes and again select Unity as the file format. Geometry should be triangles. And we can see this will cost us five cloud credits. Let's click generate. Once both characters are generated, we simply click on generated characters and we can download them. So here we simply click on download for our free character. And on the right here, 
click on purchase and download for the paid character. Once the characters are downloaded, we simply unzip the folders that were downloaded into our Unity project, and we will continue our tutorial in Unity. When we import our characters into Unity, we might get a dialog that says that one of the textures is not set as a normal map. We can simply click on Fix Now. The files that were downloaded were simply FBX files, and Unity automatically creates folders with all the textures and materials for them. And here we can see the two characters that we just created. The first thing we can do is change the rig of the characters from generic to humanoid. Simply click on the file, the FBX file, and go to Import Settings, Rig, and select Humanoid. Click on Configure, Apply, and you can see the rig of the character. It seems to look fine. We have fingers, we do not have individual toes, and everything seems to be green, so Unity is happy with it. Let's click Done. Same goes for the paid character. Change the rig to Humanoid. Click on Configure. Apply. Character uses the same rig, and we can click Done. Let's drag our characters into the scene. And move them next to our other characters. Let's take a closer look at our characters. Our free character is on the right, our paid character is on the left. When we zoom in, you can already see the difference in the detail of the characters and the resolution of the textures. For example, the shirt here on the right is fairly low resolution and simply painted on the, the character. The paid character on the other hand looks fairly detailed, the mesh itself is detailed and the textures have a decent resolution. When we actually look at different parts of the character, we see that in, the, in fact the clothing items are not separate items but part of the main mesh and part of the main texture as well. So you can see there's simply no gap in between the clothing items and the character. That means we don't need a double-sided shader for these characters, but in some cases you can really see how the textures are just painted on in a very simplistic fashion and it really doesn't look very realistic. So there's downsides and upsides to this kind of way of creating characters. On the other hand, we have eyes, glands, and teeth as separate objects for the free character. And also in addition to that, we have a trans object for both eyes for the paid character. Now I believe those are supposed to be used for additional reflections or tears on top of the eyes. But in our case, we can simply hide them. We change the rendering mode of these items to fade. And already you can see that the eyes are much more clear can now reduce the transparency to zero, and we're good to go. Now, each of these characters also has lights that are imported, or that are supposed to be imported. However, in Unity, those objects are simply empty game objects, so we don't need them and they only eat up some performance. So we would simply delete those. And that should actually be removed in the first place, since we specifically exported for Unity out of the character generator. So this is an oversight on part of Autodesk. When we look at Master, this is the rig for each of our characters. And they should be identical between both characters. Now let's have a look at the detail of each character. Let me simply look in our project view and select each FBX files mesh. In this case here, the low resolution mesh has 5100 triangles versus the high resolution mesh of the paid character has almost 42,000 triangles. Also here we can see that the high resolution character has 65 blend shapes. Let's have a look at those blend shapes. For that we select the high resolution character mesh here and it comes with a skinned mesh renderer which contains the blend shapes. 
This is very similar to the characters we created with Dask 3D. Here we have a lot of different blend shapes for phonemes, so that our character could actually be animated to talk. We also have emotional expressions like disgust, kiss, blow, nostrils, eyes being closed, and so on. So lots of different blend shapes that can be really useful. That is a very handy feature of this character. Now one last thing that we could do to set these characters up for usage is to simply go to the high resolution mesh and change the standard shaders smoothness value and reduce it slightly so that our characters are not as shiny and smooth. Now obviously there's a lot of settings and we could use either the normal standard shader or the specular setup and go into a lot of detail. Unfortunately, since the clothing items are not modeled separately, they're also not individual materials and textures assigned to each of the clothing items. So changing your shaders for each of those items to be more realistic is impossible, so you need to find one shader setting that works for the whole character. That is one downside of those Autodesk characters. Altogether, I'd say that the free version of the character is really just usable for background scenes where the character is not close up, because the lack of detail and the low resolution textures really prevents it from looking nice. The paid version of the character looks okay, the resolution is okay, the detail of the character is okay, it's just unfortunate that the clothing items are not separate and we don't have any control over them. That is all for now, thanks for watching.